One day I was paddling on the Gowanus Canal, which is this lovely industrial waterway on the edge of my Brooklyn neighborhood, and I started noticing parts of the built environment and parts of the natural environment, and I saw bulk metal that had been dumped there, and electronic waste, and yard waste, household waste, and I realized that I was somehow connected to all of this stuff. And it was at that moment that I realized that I could write a book about all these different streams of waste. I started out doing some basic research about uh, what we used to do in New York with our trash. Through the 18th century, actually, uh, New Yorkers threw a lot of their waste out onto the streets. Uh, a lot of it was putrescible waste, it was organic material, and it was consumed by thousands, tens of thousands of dogs and pigs that roamed the streets. And garbage collection was a private business. If you were wealthy enough, you could afford to hire carters who would pick up the waste from your house and from your streets, and they would bring it off to the rivers and dump it in the waterways. In the poorer areas, the stuff accumulated. Things would uh, now and then get to a tipping point and merchants would begin complaining about the pile up of waste in the streets. And so they pressured the city to organize cleanups and people would come along with carts and uh, dump it off in the rivers or bring the organic material off to reduction plants, which were out in Queens. And they would make glues and fertilizer and other valuable unguinous materials from, from this form of waste. In the 1880s, New York got its first real sanitation commissioner who organized city workers. They wore uniforms and they had brooms and carts and they went around cleaning the streets and they asked New Yorkers to separate their trash into three different categories. They collected the ash and there was a lot of ash because people cooked and heated their houses with wood. There was the wet waste which went off to those reduction plants and then the dry waste which again was tipped into low-lying areas, swamps and wetlands. Up until the 1940s when we started to build incinerators. In 1948, we started to um, dump our waste in what people call sanitary landfills, and that was the year that Robert Moses opened Fresh Kills on Staten Island. And Fresh Kills would be the largest landfill in the world for uh, almost all of the time that it was opened. And what made it sanitary is that they covered the load of waste each day with dirt, so that uh, there was less vermin, less, uh, less smell, and that was considered a better way to handle our waste. Now, what happens to our trash after we take it to the curb is that uniformed city sanitation workers come around with their packer trucks. We've all seen those with the big open backs and the crushing blade. And those trucks hold about 10 tons of waste and when they pack out, when they're full, the truck delivers it to a transfer station. Um, these are usually on the edges of neighborhoods. Um, they're in poorer neighborhoods. And these are privately owned transfer stations. And when they're full, an 18-wheeler pulls in and a front-end loader fills up this truck with all the waste and then they head off to landfills in six different states. That waste could be going off to New Jersey, to upstate New York, to Pennsylvania, to Ohio, to Virginia, or even to South Carolina. I learned that the trash that I put on the curb is going off to a landfill in Pennsylvania and the metal that I set out was going to a scrapyard in Jersey City where it was shredded and then uh, piled into a ship that most of the time is bound for China. My paper is collected from the curb. My plastics were also sold uh, probably in the south to people who make things like carpeting and fiber fill for sleeping bags. And the glass that I was, you know, washing out my peanut butter jars diligently um, and putting them in the recycling and they were being sorted out at the facility in Jersey City and being crushed and then sold to landfills and used as cover to cover up the, the waste at the end of the day. In reporting my book, I hung out with my sand men, my sanitation workers, and there are some women, but they all go by sand men. And my garage is called the Brooklyn South Six. I watched them, two men on a truck, um, doing collections, that's the putrescible waste, and they would drag my can to an opening between cars, and they would take turns heaving these cans into the truck, and they worked extremely quickly. It was balletic, they were flinging barrels and covers and sliding things together, and they worked in silence, and it was this beautifully mechanized ballet almost. Um, another truck would come by on recycling day and collect the containers, the plastic and the metal and the glass, and then another truck would come by and collect the paper. Watching the sanitation workers work and talking to people in the Department of Sanitation, I was most struck by how little thought people give to where their waste is going 
how little thought they give to the people who are dealing with it every day. I think we could improve our waste management system by separating organic material. So if we compost the stuff, we'll avoid generating methane um, and we'll also make uh, something nice to put back on the earth and regenerate our soils. I think that we need more public education and I think that we also have to push a lot more responsibility for certain types of our trash back onto the manufacturers or the brand owners who make these materials. Their responsibility right now ends when you pluck the item from the shelf. It doesn't matter to them if the community where this water bottle ends up has no collection system in place. Um, that, that expense and that burden is passed on to taxpayers and onto municipalities. So if we change our laws and set up these systems so that manufacturers are required to take responsibility and work out their own systems for getting those materials back and making them into something new, I think we would reduce the waste stream. Writing the book raised my awareness of where things go when I'm done with them, but it also opened up this whole other world of how things get to me in the first place. So now I have a, a, a more, more of a systems view when looking at the life cycle of, of everything, and I think it's helped me to be more of an ecological citizen, to know not only where my garbage is going, but where, it, where it's coming from, how energy gets to me, and how water gets to me, and where it goes when I'm done with it. Just the full cycle of everything that comes into my life.